Hey guys, David here and welcome to the FitPro Daily. It's the start of a brand new week, so I want to set a brand new topic for you. As we're only weeks away from opening two, I want to make sure that your sales is up to scratch. In particular, I want to make sure that when you've got these leads coming in and you're sat with a consultation or you're doing phone call sales, you are ready to go. You're ready and knowing what to do to convert them over the line, to take the payments and get them signed up. So we're going to start off this week is a guest interview. We're actually going to invite Ella on one of the team to share her experience in working for Woucher and how she was able to generate over a million in sales while working there. Plus, at the end of the interview, I will break down what she did for Woucher and how we can replicate that into our own fitness business. But before we do dive into the guest interview, if you haven't subscribed to the channel just yet, what are you waiting for? Click that big red button below to subscribe. That way you'll always be up to date with what's working when it comes to marketing your fitness business. Good evening, everybody. I'm just triple checking that this is actually live inside the group before we get started yeah it's telling me it's live so welcome everybody to uh this is the second one in february or is it the first one in february the second, one. second one yeah mm-hmm. uh and this week we've got ella coming on ella is one of the team here at fit pro legion she used to work for Woucher and she's going to talk to us a little bit more about uh how she made over a million in sales for Woucher while working there so ella good yeah. evening Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> if you are watching along, do comment below. Keep us updated with uh, what your thoughts and questions are. Just literally put them in below, and we can pick those up. So we've got uh, Amy. Amy. Good evening, Amy. How are you? You okay? Uh, Amy Portal member as well. Okay. So I think Ella, I'll hand it over to you, sure. and uh, we will just dive straight in. Okay. So welcome everyone. Um, So a little introduction about me. Um, I worked for Woucher for about a year, just over a year. Um, And what I did was I helped clients receive free marketing to over our 20 million subscribers. Um, I was mainly based in the Southwest. So that's who I targeted, restaurants in the Southwest, hotels in the Southwest, anything to do with being in the Southwest, which is Bristol, Wales, Bath, etc. Um, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how I managed somehow to generate 1 million for Woucher. So a little bit about me. So I worked for Woucher um, as a business consultant. And before I worked for Woucher, I studied music at Barstow University. I'm only 23 and still managed to generate 1 million for Woucher. Um, I know the importance of standing out, like your deals standing out, your programs, everything like that. So how did we get the clients? It was all about research. So, so much research. We, a half of our days was basic, basically full of admin where we were finding the best restaurants that were nearby and then finding their competitors as well. We would try to make 10 attempts at contact and that's what I always recommend to you guys and to anyone else I speak to who's trying to do sales calls, trying to get into sales is don't stop at the fifth go, just keep trying. Obviously don't do it every single day um but you know try different ways as well potentially getting through to them through social media emails giving them a call anything like that um follow-up emails are so important as soon as we would get off the phone with a client we would send that email straight away make sure it's got all the information that they've asked for don't leave anything out um and one thing we did obviously at the minute with covid um and when we were working when we covid was around as well um we couldn't do it face-to-face meetings but we would try and do zoom meetings as well but we would always try to get meetings where we would go and visit their premises and we would talk through them then and it usually would always give us a deal so that was great right does anyone have any questions so far i'll ask i'll leave it for a second there is like a 10 second delay in the what we say what actually appears on Facebook well I'll go through this one and then I'll come back and see if there's any so I know probably all of you have heard of Woucher um and before I started working for Woucher I would look at it and think why would anyone want to work for Woucher because 
the deal you would always think the deals were not going to be very good because of how cheap they were so you thought oh it's just people that can't really sell their products but why people worked for us was we had over 20 million subscribers we had 200,000 active subscribers in the Southwest. And what I mean by active subscribers is that we know that they were constantly checking their emails. So every day we would send out emails to our customers and we knew how many were opening them. And we would also get rid of dead subscribers as well. So people who were not checking their emails anymore. Um, we helped quite a few clients out of selling their business. So we had a few clients who were potentially going to sell their business due to the fact of becoming bankrupt or they just weren't generating enough anymore. But we helped them get their name back on the map and thankfully helped them get out of that and now they're still going. So what can I say? Um, one of the great things about working for us as well is you would potentially receive forever customers. So if you worked in a restaurant, it was most likely that 50% of the customers we sent you um, were going to return. So they would be forever customers and you generate more money as well. <clears throat> and the main thing is we had no costs up front. So we just took a small portion of every promotion and that covered our costs. Right. Any questions? No, I guess I'm just not that good. <laughs> okay, so why would why would I work with Voucher? So a lot of people would come back at us once we sort of gave our pitch and would say, you want me to reduce my prices by 50% and then take 25% on top of that? Because if you've looked on Voucher before, you can probably see that a lot of the deals are 50% off. So our clients would have to reduce their prices by around 50%. Um, and then we would take a portion, so it could be 25% on top of that as well. So 25% off the selling price. Um, the amount you'd actually reduce, so what we would say to our customers is the amount they'd actually reduce from their deal price would be less than marketing. So if they wanted to potentially do like what we do with Facebook ads, or they wanted to pay for marketing and, pay for Google ads and things like that, it could potentially cost them less than if they wanted to work with us. Um, and like I said in the last one, 50% of our customers are likely to return. And if you make, if they made no sales, or if their deal just was not successful at all, then neither do we, we wouldn't generate any money from it, it'd be a bit annoying, but once again, we wouldn't take any money from them. So the small clients, they were our most important and easiest and that would be sort of our our restaurants or our beauty salons and things like that because a lot of the time they did sell quite a few deals um and just because the price was a bit lower it helped generate so much for voucher so and they were also easiest to get back on and usually it would just be one phone call like do you want to set up another deal again and they'd say yes yeah. so it was it was ideal which was restaurants beauty deals um, adding incentives so the deal stands out. So what we would do is usually if we said to a customer, we want to do two course dining with a glass of wine, they would say, well, that's a lot of money for me. So what we would do is add in something that would be less money for them. So for example, we would tell them to give the glass of wine as soon as they sit down. So it's going to be likely that that customer is going to order another drink, which means they would get more money, which they wouldn't have got if we didn't send the customer to them. Um, with our small clients, what I'd advise is we were always checking in when the deals were running, making sure that they were receiving their money, make sure they were happy with how the deal was running, make sure there was any changes. And as I'm sure all of you know, returning clients are the best clients. Now let's have a quick look. Okay, and then our big clients. So what we would usually focus on is we'd focus on getting 20 small clients and then talk to two big clients as well. Um, with our big clients, we really, really had to research into our clients to make sure that we were speaking to the right people because it would take a long time if we were speaking to, I don't know, the CEO of Frankie and Benny's and we wanted to get in touch with them, it would be absolutely impossible. So we had to do so much research to find out who the best person was. And I mean, the best thing for me was LinkedIn. It was just the easiest way to find everyone. Um, we, we don't usually plan our scripts. A lot of the time we were speaking to small clients, um, we would really just go off the back of our hand. But with our big clients, we really had to plan it out to make sure that we knew what they were up to, if they were like a restaurant or a hotel, if they've got any news, um, and talk to them like we were talking to a friend. And it takes a lot of time um, to sign up our big clients. We would have 
ones, for example, we signed Pure Gym um, and it took, I think, about four months to get them over the line because they can be wanting to make sure that they get the most out of the deal. But like all the advice, it takes time, but you just can't really give up. And another thing we did to get our big clients is we did reduce pricing for big clients. So that could be that we reduced um, how much they could give us. It wasn't always 50% off, um, but so they could maybe do 30% off, but we would also lower our percentage that we would take as well. So my top two deals, the two that made me the most money for Woucher was ironically a dog festival. Um, we're not really sure why, but our demographic for Woucher was, you know, middle-aged ladies. So dog festivals were something that they just absolutely loved. Um, the reason that we actually signed the deal was because uh, I did the meeting in person and it was very difficult to get her to sign overall. We had to make, I think about 10 changes to the deal before she could actually say yes. So, but I knew that it was gonna be a really, really good deal. So never say no unless it was completely impossible. Um, we added extras to increase price but reduce costs. So one of the things we added to make sure that she was getting back enough was I think we added in like a doggy bag, which just had some doggy treats in it, which she was getting from um, her sponsors anyway. So that we added in and put it as five pounds, which means the deal went up, but she wasn't losing any more money. And if anything, she was getting more back. And then one of the main things was we offered her front page of Woucher Bristol, Woucher Bath, Woucher Southwest and main page on all our socials and the first deal with the emails. So like I said before, we sent out emails every day and she was the first deal that went out in the emails. And then my second one was a Christmas tree delivery um, because at the time, this was actually just before I left Woucher, we couldn't have a meeting in person, but we did do a huge amount of Zoom meetings and constant communication, which was, it was, it took up nearly every single hour of my day, but it was completely worth it in the end. I worked with our CEO at Woucher to find the best deal. So I wasn't always communicating directly through him, but he was going through my manager to make sure that we were happy with the deal. Um, and getting the improvement on the content for socials and our national deal. So our national deal is when it goes throughout everywhere in the UK. It's not just Southwest. Even though they were in the Southwest, we wanted to make sure that because it was a Christmas tree delivery, um, that it could go absolutely everywhere. So that's what we did. Is there any questions so far? Okay. And then the main bit I'm sure you've all been waiting for is um, getting our clients over the line. So one thing I'd recommend is um, what we did like to do is we like to sign our contracts over the phone and obviously the one-to-one -one meetings, but we did find that our clients thought our contracts were so intense and that was mainly because they were for our big clients. So they had so much information in them. And a lot of the times our clients would put off signing deals for weeks, if not months, just because they weren't ready or they just couldn't be bothered to read a 10 page contract, which I don't really blame them. Um, so what we used to do is we would um, schedule in a time to speak over the phone or to meet them in person just to make sure that if they had any questions that we were right there to assist them. Um, one thing that I did say quite a lot was I gave them my word. Usually I wouldn't do it all the time. But if I knew that they were going to be a really successful deal, then I'd mm -hmm. give them my word that they could trust me. What do you say, Dave? Sorry, that's my computer telling me someone's on the website. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so we also gave them a clear understanding of what they should expect. So if we didn't think the deal was going to work too well, we would constantly tell them, you know, we do, we can't guarantee that this is going to generate a lot, but we will constantly make sure that we're checking in with you to help you in any way and potentially change up the deal. But a lot of the times we did have really stubborn, um, we did have really stubborn clients who would just not care and would be like, would not be happy about taking 50% off, but we really needed to get something signed for them. Um, but, you know, they didn't really generate a lot, but that's why we'd like to tell them what they should expect. One thing that we always needed to remember is these clients need us more than we needed them. So it's the same with the gyms. Like, even though you do want your clients, you know that if they were interested in the first place, they are going to be 100% more, they need you a lot more than 
then you need them. So we would always say that to ourselves, um, especially when our customers messed, our clients messaged us all the time. We knew that it was because they needed us. Um, and yeah, one of the main things that we actually found worked really well is, like I said before, if we were working with a restaurant and they were just struggling to sign the contract, we would usually ring them up and be like, oh, you know, um, the restaurant next door, oh, well, they've, we've actually spoken to them and they're happy to do this deal. So I just wanted to let you know in case you wanted to sign now because they're going to be front page tomorrow. And honestly, it was the most incredible thing because they would just sign straight away. It was great. So this is just the last thing. Before we take any question, guys, we know that making a sale isn't always easy, but with some dedication and practice, I promise you'll perfect it in no time. Trust me, I know. Um, if you guys want to sort of watch this again, make sure you do make some notes, rewind. Now, if you enjoyed, we have just launched our web design and management service. Um, and we'd love you guys to come and join if it would be something you're interested in. We can take um, the stress and confusion completely off your hands of web designing and updating it when you think it needs to be. So to celebrate the launch, we're actually removing the setup fee for the first five that join. So I'll just give you a bit of the information here. We can have a bit of a read through because it's a bit long, but yeah, it's a really great um, website design course if you guys do want to join. But like we said, there's no setup fee and we can talk about payment plans and things like that as well. Um, and like it says at the bottom, any changes, updates, and improvements you need, we can get them done in less than 48 hours. And you have my word on that one. So if you're interested, then here are, well, here's the all the information you need. Obviously, rewind this if you need it. Um, you can always message me, Dave, Willow, Holly, Elsie, and we can get back to you about more information on that as well. Um, and yeah, this is just for if anyone's got any questions, just fire them in and we'll, well, we'll get back to you, really. So just just going over what Ella was saying, like trying to take out what she said from Woucher to how we can implement this in our fitness business. Like Woucher was telling them you had to reduce your price to 50 percent off. So this is all about creating the right offer to present to your prospects. Yeah. So the right offer, the right hook. So we at the gym do six weeks. We've got people that do 28 day. We've got people that do a three day pass. We've got people that do 12 week. You need to have the offer, create the offer that most entices the user to or the prospect to want to take up this um, this offer you got. So why don't you like 50% off or like you said, the main course and the glass yeah. of wine or whatever it was. That was the hook. That was the offer to get people yeah. to want to cross that line. So we in our fitness business, needs to definitely have a hook or offer. And yeah. then started talking about doing the research needed to chase after the prospects themselves. And again, it's the same for us. If we want to work with over 40 guys that want to really pack on some serious muscle, we need to be researching what's going on in their head, what's going on in their life, what's going on at work and all this stuff. So when we do present the offer, when we're creating the social media content, when we're creating all this extra stuff, we're talking specifically to those people yeah Ella mentioned the no sale follow-up massively important if someone says no to you it doesn't mean that deal is off it doesn't mean they're not going to purchase your six-week program or your pt setup or whatever you've got going on it just means they weren't ready right then to purchase a follow-up the next day hey uh, hey Ella I know you came in yesterday so I want to check in see if you'd had any additional questions if they say no, follow up within two or three weeks. Hey, Ella, just want to check in again. I know it's been a few weeks. Maybe you've had a chance to think about it. I'd love to invite you down for a week's free pass or something. Because again, going back to the hooker offer, anything to try and entice them in that little bit more. So Ella was saying sometimes 50%, they could come down to maybe 40% or something or change it up a little bit just to close that sale and to cross that line. Yeah. Uh incentives to cross the line we've done this quite a lot at dk9 fitness especially our six-week program is 159 and they're umming and they're ahhing and they're not 100 sure so what we'll say is you know what we'll make eight weeks for 159 because we know once they're in once they've crossed that line then uh we've got them for the long term so incentives what else can you do to help just get that sale over the line 
And then the last one, obviously, you couldn't do that with your last client, but contact, do face to face stuff wherever you can. It will make such a big difference. If you're selling online, make sure you do a Zoom sales session. They can see you, they can visualize you, they get to know you much quicker. So it's easier to do that. This is why we at FitPro Lead Gen do this because we want you. Oh, let's just show you. get both of us. <laughs> we want you to get to know us, to like us and trust us. So eventually one day you might reach out and see how you can potentially work with us. So they're the takeaways that I took from Ella. I'd love to know what takeaways you have, or even if you if you're having a takeaway tonight because you can't be able to cook, <laughs> let us know below. Uh, but yeah, let us know and we'll answer some questions now. We'll give it two or three minutes to answer some questions. I can see there is a question. Who is yeah. the question? I'm a PT and I run a group class. How can I implement these ideas? Well, it's mainly about sort of um, the ideas that we've just spoken about. It's mainly about if you can't really get your client over the line or what to sort of do if you're having a difficult client or just, it's hard to explain really, but <laughs> the way the way to implement the ideas is just sort of what Dave said, his takeaways from it. It's just to make sure that, they are your friends that like with the research it's just to make sure that when you have a chat with them that it's a really thoughtful chat and you're really listening to everything they're saying and listen to every aspect if they talk about their dog make sure to mention their dog like it's it's unbelievably important to just have a chat and follow up all the time and just do exactly what dave said really <laughs> yeah, exactly what Elle was saying. Like when you do consultations, even if it's on a scrap piece of paper like this, where you just take some random notes, mm. write it all down because you never know further on down the line. Like, oh, I'm not sure about the price. And then you can go back, oh, didn't your partner say that um, he was going to buy you a new handbag or something if you lost some weight or he, mm. uh, you were going to have, uh, you can get into your better clothes when you go on holiday if you lose this additional weight and stuff. It will, those are the things that you can come back at them with yeah it really is a case of making notes becoming friends with them getting to know them so they feel confident enough to trust you um not 100 percent sure on saying oh yeah the next door neighbor's gonna lose a bit more weight than you so you best pull your finger out and do something no i wouldn't i wouldn't sort of say that way <laughs> but i i know i don't think you could really imply that to working with the gyms but it, it works so well when you're a competitor which isn't physical <laughs> but yeah it did work really well for us but i wouldn't really use it with the gyms <laughs> no worries guys we're going to leave it there obviously if you have any questions just pop them below we can get back to you tomorrow or something like that because it is 20 to uh 8 here in the uk i think ella's off to bed and that's right I I job, yeah. <laughs> speak to you all tomorrow at some point Bye, guys. Thank you, everybody Bye-bye. Okay, so that was the guest interview that me and Ella did inside the free Facebook group. If you haven't already joined the free Facebook group, then head over to Facebook and search FitPro Lead Gen with Dave. But as usual, if you want to check out some of the videos from last week or some of our other videos, check out these videos just here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, press that big red button below. Or if you want to reach out and chat to me, just simply search for David Kyle on Facebook, drop me a message, and let's have a chat. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Cheers.